Final talk for this afternoon, the effective catalyst preparation solvent, an activity and seal activity, physical properties of a total continuum like the Maluna Fischer-Tropes catalyst. Well, thanks for the introduction. Well, thanks for waiting a little longer. <laughs> During my talk, um, during the presentation, I talk about the facts of promoter deposition order and solvent nature on the physical, chemical, and activity selectivity properties of Fischer Tropsch cobalt catalyst. So, I promise that this is the last time that we have an overview about FT synthesis for today. <laughs> and basically, the FT synthesis is the conversion of different carbon sources like biomass, coal, and natural gas to. Uh, liquid hydrocarbons that can be used as fuels and other chemicals. Basically, the FT synthesis can be approximated to a polymerization reaction of the methylene group, generally on cobalt catalysts or iron catalysts. Yeah, um, so far, uh, a lot of attention has been given to the energy independence and at the same time, there are a lot, uh, there are large reserves of biomass, coal, and natural gas that could be used to produce liquid uh, hydrocarbons. Compared with other technologies, the FT synthesis is well demonstrated with several plants um, on, uh, operating uh, in many countries and some under construction. And many of them are used in fixed bed reactors or slurry uh, bubble uh, reactors. The catalysts again are in cobalt, and the cobalt catalysts show higher selective for long chain hydrocarbons, <laughs> no water gas shift reaction activity, and longer catalyst life. However, the drawbacks are the higher selective for methane and the higher cost compared with iron. The 35 year uh, BYU catalyst <laughs> group uh, researching FT um, catalysts result in a list of physical, chemical, and <coughs> activity selectivity properties of the ideal FT cobalt catalyst. Here, uh, you can see the summary of these uh, properties, but basically, the cobalt catalyst will have, um, is composed by a large, by a large fraction uh, of support, then the metal in a range of 25% in weight, uh, stabilizer, and then the metal promoter in a range of 0.2% in weight. To a large extent, all these properties are affected by the preparation and the, by the pretreatment uh, conditions. So within this context, our goal is to maximize these desirable properties and prepare baseline, well-defined cobalt catalysts with commercially representative performance. And in this study, we are investigating the effect of chemical nature of impregnation solutions, like water against a mixture of acetone and ethanol, and the deposition order, like co-deposition versus consecutive, on the physical, chemical, and activity selectivity properties of this catalyst. So starting <coughs> with the study, we are investigating the co-deposition versus consecutive deposition because you like to use the noble metal promoters more efficiently. And the other approach is to change the, the solvent nature. In your case, we're using water versus uh, acetone and ethanol mixture. And even though many uh, studies suggest and they show that organic based preparations result in more active cobalt catalysts for an FT synthesis, the scale up process is not very industry friendly. So therefore, uh, ACOS based preparation that could result in catalysts with comparable activity are more desirable. The solvent can affect um, the catalyst and the interactions between the metal and the support in different ways. The solvent can change the electrostatic interactions, can change the, based on the pH of the solvent, 
the surface of the support can be positively or negatively charged. And also, the solvent nature can affect the drying step due to its um, viscosity and surface tension. So we start our preparation, stabilizing the support. We use alumina pellets, gum alumina pellets, and they were dry and calcined. Then using uh, organic chelated um, solution, complex solution with London DTA with a controlled pH, these uh, alumina pellets were stabilized with lanthanum, and after stirring, filtering, wash, drying, and after calcination, uh, the pellets are ready for the impregnation with the metals. The, just looking now to the preparation, <coughs> we use like a wet impregnation with um, forced deposition through evaporation. And we have here uh, the metal solution and the support they were heated during the preparation. And between each preparation, between each impregnation, um, the catalyst was dried and calcined. And after the final step, it was um, calcined again and bulk reduced and passivate. So the final catalyst, if everything was right, hopefully we will have the metal, the promoter, and the support. So looking closely to the preparation, we have a picture showing that the cobalt nitrate was the precursor for uh, cobalt, and the rutinic chloride was used like in an eco solution or in a solution on a mixture of acetone and ethanol. So after drying calcine, we have the second impregnation of the cobalt. So we used to approach in the co-deposition Cobalt and ruthenium were added simultaneously in just one step, the third step, and the third impregnation. While in the concept of the position, cobalt was added first, and then ruthenium was added in the last step. All these catalysts were characterized <coughs> by BET analysis. Uh, their reducibility were measured, uh, was measured by uh, TPR using hydrogen, and CO chemistry was used. The extent of reduction was uh, measured by oxygen titration. And we had like, oh, here is the hydrogen uptake, and you have some CO chemistry to optimize the reduction temperature. Particle size, morphology, and composition were studied by TEM, and finally we have some um, activity and selectivity uh, tests. Here you can see this table, a summary of all the uh, physical properties of the stabilized support and the three catalysts. No equals uh, co-deposit, no equals consecutive deposit, and equals consecutive deposit. Here we have the surface air for volume for the immediate book density. I would like to show you that the deposition um, the deposition order doesn't affect so much the uh, surface area. On the other hand, the nature of the solvent can affect in the surface area. As you can see, that the no equals, the equals consecutive prepared catalyst has a lower surface area than the other ones, and it's probably due to the high surface tension of water that might have uh, collapsed the pores of the catalyst during drying. And we can see that our results are very similar to the um, study performed by Stoyanov and co-works that they prepared um, iron catalysts on activated carbon using different solvents. And here you can see that the surface area for the echoes is lower for the other ones with the exception of acetone. But since we use a mixture of ethanol and acetone, we got something a little higher than the equals uh, base preparation. So we can have some blocking of the pores depending on the, the, the solvent. Here we have some micrographs of some TM and STM. And I'm showing here the organic base preparation, prepared catalyst. And the dark spots are the cobalt oxides on the gray 
alumina uh, support. They are usually like in a spherical shape, and they're in a range of six uh, or five nanometers that matches with the value that we had found by hydrogen consortium. So it suggests that many of the, a large fraction of these uh, clusters, these particles, are inside of the pores of the catalyst. And here we have the a chemical analysis determined by ICP. And I can show here that the cobalt contains very similar between all catalysts. But the interesting part is the ruthenium content, the preparation that cobalt and ruthenium were added simultaneously, result in a large loss of ruthenium during the calcination. Can be during the formation of high volatile ruthenium oxides, but also to the fact that the cobalt nitrates decomposing together and maybe carrying some of this ruthenium. We compared the results from ICP together with the EDS, and here we have the spectrum of EDS showing uh, the cobalt peaks, but however, we couldn't find a well-defined London peak and the routine didn't appear at all, didn't appear at all. So we looked through uh, other technique, uh, HRTEM, and here you can see the fringes, and we can see that the cobalt oxides are very closely associated with the routine oxide, the lanthanum oxide, in that you know, dark spots that I had shown uh, previously. We talk about the cobalt oxide, but the active phase for the FTC is the cobalt metal. So we studied the reducibility of this catalyst through a TPR with hydrogen, and here we have the reduction profile of these uh, three catalysts. I'd like to show first that they are, uh, the peaks are well defined. The maximum temperature uh, of each peak, the first and the second, are very similar for all of the catalysts. And the only difference, basically, is the shape and the intensity. The first peak is usually attributed to the reduction of cobalt 304 to cobalt O, and the second peak to cobalt O to cobalt metal. So similar, similar results were observed by uh, Van Steen with uh, cobalt on silica catalyst using different solvent, like we did. And he found out that the solvent nature doesn't change the position of the peaks and the number of the peaks, but may change the intensity and the shape. But up to ethanol, everything is pretty similar, but in the same way that we had seen. We measured the number of active sites, cobalt metals, cobalt metals using a hydrogen chemistration. And for that, we followed the procedure reported by Johns and Bartolomeu where we have the first step is reduction, then a high temperature purge to minimize the spillover of the metal on the support that may happen at high temperature when the hydrogen is flowing on the support. And then we have the hydrogen abs absorption and a low temperature purge just to remove the, um, the hydrogen that was inside of the tubes, but not the hydrogen that was absorbed on the sides. Then the desorption was performed uh, from minus 83C to 450C, and a thermal conductive detector was used to measure the hydrogen that was desorbed. Then, based on the hydrogen uptake, the CO content from the ICP, and the extent of reduction that I'll show in the next slide, we can calculate the dispersion. So, here in this table, we have the Catalyst again, the three catalysts, the maximum reduction temperature for the second peak, the extent of reduction uh, measured by oxygen, oxygen tritation, the CO uptake and the hydrogen uptake, and the CO dispersion. All of them have the same uh, CO dispersion, but you can notice that the reduction temperature for the non aqueous co deposit catalyst is a little higher than the other ones. So it suggests that this cobalt and ruthenium are stronger. Uh, are interacting, interacting is stronger, uh, strongly with um, in this situation, more than the other ones. But the extent of, re extent of reduction shows that the aqueous consecutive deposit catalyst was very reducible. And I'd like to show 
that the EOR is a little different, but the opposite happens then for the CO uptake. The same behavior was reported by Zhang and Sun and two different works with cobalt on silica using a dehydrated ethanol and using a eco solution. So the UR was lower for the organic base, uh, organic prepared catalyst, and the CO uptake was higher. So we saw a similar behavior, and what it, they said was that the more, more um, the catalyst that was more active for the FT synthesis was the one that had stronger uh, linear adsorbed CO and a large number of um, bridged adsorbed CO on the on the sides. Here we have some um, results from our catalyst catalyst test. And we have here the CO conversion versus the temperature. As you can see, the non aqueous co deposit catalyst is more active than the other ones. And these tests were performed at 330 psi with a ratio of CO and a CO hydrogen ratio of 2, the fixed bed reactor. And we used 0.25 grams catalyst with white quartz. Uh, sand. In order to, to better compare, to better compare this uh, data, we use um, a statistical approach, and we will see that this one here was the one that was more active. And here we have the table with the conversion report here, and we have the selective from methane and CO2 as a TOF. You can see that. <coughs> The solvent nature doesn't affect so much the CO conversion, but the order of uh, promoter deposition can affect. Similar behavior for the solvent nature was observed by Zhang and co-works in this study, where you can see that the CO conversion with catalysts prepared by water, using water, methanol, ethanol, acetone are in the same range. Just this one that's it's was like different. In our case, we saw similar behavior. Uh, our results are a little different from the, the ones reported by Lee and co-works, where they didn't see so much effect of the deposition order on the CO conversion. Here we have the statistical analysis. So we use all that uh, data from the, our reaction, and together with the uh, differential uh, reactor design equation, we calculate the uh, rate of CO consumption and using the model reported by Ribeiro and co-works, uh, a nonlinear feed uh, function was uh, used to solve for the price exponential factor and activation energy. So here you can see that the, the catalyst number one is very different than the other two catalysts. The first catalyst, the non was called the pause catalyst, is very different. And here we add the 95% uh, of the confidence interval. So we can see clearly that the first one is very different. And here we have the activation energy values. So this difference in activation energy suggests variations in the promoter distribution and thus in the heats of absorption. So we believe that the cobalt and the ruthenium are closely associated um, in, in, when we prepare them together in the non aqueous code deposit approach. Like, for example, in a solid solution, like an alloy. <coughs> so basically the conclusions are that we, our catalysts, they're in the range of the target for the ideal cobalt catalyst regarding to the physical uh, properties. They are very reducible. Uh, the dispersions are around 15%. And we can see that the organic co deposit catalyst uh, is more active to FT synthesis. And we believe the major difference between these catalysts are the EOR, the CO, and the hydrogen updates. I'd like to thank you, uh, to thank um, all members of the BYU FT consortium and the BYU uh, catalyst group, also the companies and national labs and <coughs> universities. They are members of our consortium, and Conoco Phillips, and all the students 
and that helped with this project and the Department of Physics <coughs> uh, for the TEM. Thank you very much for your attention and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. <laughs>